Okay, in this video, I want to look at three tricky limit problems with trig functions. So let's start with the first one here. So in this problem, we've got the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x divided by 3x plus tangent x. And again, what we do here, right, we try to put this, um, this limiting value in for x and evaluate it. And well, notice if we do that, we'll have sine of 0 divided by 3 times, whoops, divided by 3 times 0 plus tangent of 0. But sine of 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is clearly 0, tangent of 0 is also 0, so we're going to get this form 0 divided by 0. So if you're at the beginning of calculus, um, those of you down the road may know L'Hopital's rule that you could use here, but usually people encounter these a lot of times at the beginning of a calculus course, and you don't really know about L'Hopital's rule yet, so we're going to do a slightly different argument on these. So there's an important uh, limit result to know, and we won't prove this, but this is one that crops up quite often. So we're going to use the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. Okay, so again, notice you would have sine of 0 over 0, which, okay, again, is, is uh, indeterminate. But you can use a, a geometrical argument, and you can actually show that this limit equals 1. So... If you're interested, you can usually find a proof of this in any uh, calculus textbook. Again, it's a little bit long, but um, so I'm not going to justify it here. So you'll just have to have to trust me on this one. Okay, so we're going to make use of this result, and we're going to manipulate this original this original limit to help us get that. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do at first is. I'm just going to rewrite my tangent of x. Well, that's sine x over cosine x, right? That's just the definition of tangent. And if I wanted to, I could even rewrite that as simply, I'm going to write that as sine of x times 1 over cosine of x, right? That would still be sine over cosine, which is tangent. So the next thing that I'm going to do here you know, I want this x in the denominator, because then I can start using this result. So, okay, let's make it, let's make it happen here. So I've got sine of x, again, divided by 3x plus sine of x times 1 over cosine of x. So I just need to algebraically get that, that divided by x in there somewhere. So what I can do is I can multiply the numerator by 1 over x. And I can multiply the denominator also by 1 over x. Well, if I do that in my numerator, I could simply write the numerator as sine of x divided by x. So there's my big original fraction. So in the denominator, you're going to have to distribute. Well, you would have 3x divided by x, which is simply going to be 3. Now, the 1 over x, okay, I could put that in the denominator, and I'm going to put that, well, again, with the sine of x portion. So I'm going to have sine of x over x times 1 over cosine of x. So again, notice this is a product, right? So we don't have to distribute the, the 1 over x to both of those terms. We just have to stick it with one of them. And of course, again, I'm going to put it with the sine x over x portion because, I, again, I can use this result. <clears throat> so... We're almost there now, okay, so we can evaluate this. So I've got the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x. That's going to be equal to 1. I'm left with my 3 here. Again, my sine of x over x, that's going to be equal to 1. And I've got 1 over cosine of 0. But we know that cosine of 0 equals 1. So in that case, we're just left with 1 over 3 plus 1 times 1. And that's going to be 1 over 3 plus 1, or we'll get our solution here of 1 fourth. So all making use again of that limit. So if you saw this on a test um, and you didn't know that limit, you'd kind of be stuck, I think. Uh, so a lot of times, too, when you see trig stuff, a lot of times identities come into it. So that would certainly be a good thing to think about. But yeah, 
this is one where you have to know you have to know that result basically so we're going to use actually a very similar idea on this next one so we've got the limit as x approaches 2 of tangent of x of x minus 2 divided by x squared minus 4. Okay, so, so we just saw this result, right? The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is equal to 1. Well, you can even rewrite that a little bit, for example. You could say something like the limit as x approaches 3 of sine of x minus 3 over x minus 3. So the thing to notice here is that this thing and this thing are the same. And as we get closer to our limiting value, which in this case is 3, notice again that the, the stuff inside the parentheses is still getting closer to 0, which is very much what's happening here, right? If you plug in 0, x is getting close to 0, x is getting close to 0. Okay, well now we're using 3, but again, when we substitute that in there and in there, it's still getting close to 0 and to 0. So in this case, you would have the exact same result. This is still equal to 1. So we're going to make use of that fact. So, okay. So we've got the limit as x approaches 2 of tangent of x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. So it's really the same idea as the last problem. I'm going to write tangent as sine over cosine. So I'll have sine of x minus 2 divided by cosine of x minus 2. Well, in the denominator, we've got x squared minus 4, but I can write that as x minus 2 times x plus 2. And if we simplify this, you know, you could think about the denominators all being over 1. <clears throat> so we would flip and multiply. We would have 1 over x minus 2 times uh, x plus 2. If we flipped and multiplied. So basically what's going to happen algebraically, if you rewrite this, basically this denominator is just going to move downstairs. <clears throat> Sorry about the, the little coughing here. My allergies are killing me. So sine of x minus 2. And then we would have, okay, there's our cosine of x minus 2. Maybe I'll put that in brackets so it, uh, it's a little clear on what we mean here. And then we've got x minus 2 multiplied by x plus 2. Okay, so now we're, we're starting to be in business because... Okay, so up here I said, you know, for example, if, if the limit as x approaches 3, if sine of x minus 3 over x minus 3 is 1, <clears throat> it would be the same thing if these were all 2s, right? The limit as x approaches 2, if you have sine of x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, that's still going to be equal to 1. And hey, that's exactly what we have right here. So again, I'm just going to break this up to maybe hopefully make it a little bit, uh, just a little bit clearer. You certainly don't have to write this step, but just in terms of trying to hopefully explain this in a clear manner. So then we've got x minus 2. So I'm taking this x minus 2 and writing it first. And then I'm just left with, okay, maybe we'll even write the x plus 2 next. And then I've got cosine of x minus 2. And again, if you really wanted to be crystal clear on rewriting it, we could break up this fraction. I could have sine of x minus 2 over x minus 2. And then I could, you know, rewrite my fraction. I could multiply that by 1 over x plus 2 times cosine of x minus 2. Again, not, not totally necessary, but just to hopefully make things clear. And again, now we're in business. We can start, we can use the fact that the limit as x approaches 2 of sine of x minus 2 over x minus 2. That's going to be that result that we just saw. That's equal to 1. And, well, for this part, the x plus 2, we can just plug 2 in. We would have 2 plus 2. And then we would have cosine of 2 minus 2. Okay, well, that's just going to be cosine of 0 when we substitute it in. And again, now we're pretty much there. We've got 1 times, let's see, we would have 1 over 2 plus 2 is 4. We said that cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So it looks like we're getting 1 fourth as our solution. Is that what we got for the last one? I think, okay, so we got 1 fourth again. So, okay, same idea. You're just using that, that first limit result we saw in a slightly different form, but it's still telling us the same thing. 
So that's the, the trick on that one. All right, let's look at one more because we're, we're having fun. Okay, so this one, let's take a gander at this one. And I, sh I, sh I should say as well, um, there's another limit and that's worth knowing. A lot of times you see it in a textbook, you, you often see it mentioned really close to where you see that, that limit as x approaches zero, sine x over x1. And I don't want to trick you here because we actually don't need this one um, in this problem. But it is one that crops up quite often. So if you are taking a test or a quiz and you see these limits, you may ask, do I need to know these? So that's another one that you might be responsible for. And when I first saw this problem, I even thought, maybe it has something to do with that. Because, right, you know, I've got this 1 minus cosine x, and I could even multiply both sides of that by negative 1, and, um, you know, I could get that. And uh, so I was thinking, maybe I need to manipulate it to get that. But it turns out that is not the way to go on this one. So this one is a little bit trickier, I think. So I think this one is the hardest of them all, in my own personal opinion. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to use a trig identity to get started. So a lot of times this is, you know, I think this is going to be the hard thing about math is just remembering all these identities and when to use them. So there's the identity that says that cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 times sine squared of x. Well, okay, that means I could, uh, I could add... 2 sine squared of x to both sides, so 2 sine squared of x. And then I could subtract cosine of 2x from both sides to get this equivalent identity. Now, the idea is for this identity, whatever is here, you're going to have half of that here, right? So we've got 2x next to our cosine. We've only got a single x next to our sine squared. So if we want to manipulate that, because I've only got cosine of x, right, in my original limit. So this identity would turn into, well, instead of having 2x, if I just want x, again, we said whatever here is half of what is there. So instead of having 2 sine squared of x, I'm going to have 2 sine squared of x over 2. Okay, so again, this relationship, this part that next to sine squared is half of what's next to cosine. <clears throat> so now, um, okay, now we're starting to get close because I'm going to replace my 1 minus cosine x there with this. <clears throat> so I've got the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 sine squared of x over 2 divided by x squared. And if you wanted to, we could rewrite this. Remember, sine squared of something just means you have sine of something times sine of something, okay, right? That's what the sine squared means. So I'm going to break this up. So there's my 2 out front. I could write this as sine of x over 2 divided by, well, instead of x squared, I'm going to put one of my x's there. And then I've got sine of x over 2 again, divided by x. So, right, if we multiply the denominators, we're still going to get our x squared back that we had previously. If we multiply our sine and our sine, we're going to have sine squared, so we'll get that back. And then we've got our 2. Okay, so now we're going back to, again, this limit, okay? So it says that we have sine of x divided by x, and again, we need this and this to be the same thing. So we're just going to have to do a little manipulation because here I've got x over 2, and that means in the denominators I also want x divided by 2. Well, that's the good thing. We're just bringing in a constant, so we can do that. So uh, if we just focus strictly on the denominator, so, okay, so if I divide here by 2 and divide it here by 2, well, I can't just divide by 2 magically, right? I can't just throw that in there without changing it. But notice if I plugged a 4 into the denominator, I would, if I uh, multiplied, I would have 4 divided by 2, divided by another 2, and that would be 4 divided by 4, or just 1. 
So what I've done in my, you know, my, my denominator of my fraction is I've multiplied the top by 4 and I've divided by 4 as well. And again, you know, I, I don't know if that's a clear way to write it. You could say, okay, I'm dividing by 2 here, so if I multiply by 2, if I divide by 2 here, if I multiply by 2, clearly I've got, you know, 2 divided by 2 and 2 divided by 2, so I'm just multiplying by 1. So I'm pulling those 2s out front, 2 times 2. I'm pulling that 2 times 2 out front, and that's where I'm getting my 4 from. And now we're basically done. So the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 over 4, well, that's just going to be 2 fourths. We've now got this limit that we want. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over 2 divided by x over 2. That's just going to be equal to 1. Ditto for the next one, because it's the same thing. So we're just going to get 1. And well, 2 divided by 4, that's just 1 half. And if you multiply it by 1 and by 1, you're just going to be left with 1 half. So, okay, three little limit problems that I think are, are decent problems. This, uh, this last one, or excuse me, the, uh, which one was it? The very first one, I think, that we looked at was actually on a test that somebody had that I was helping with. So, um, something you could totally expect to see potentially on a, a test or a quiz, or potentially a, you know, a final. So, all right, everybody, I hope these limit problems help you out. Again, trig can be tricky. You've got to remember these special limits. You also have to know your identities, and there's definitely a handful that I think a lot of times you're expected to know. But yeah, as always, feel free to post comments or questions, and I'll see if I can't steer you in the right direction.